Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. On today's little episode, we're going to be doing some maintenance, I think. We haven't been doing a lot of that recently. I've been doing lots of little builds, lots of various tasks in and around the workshop. And um, so I think we better do a little bit of maintenance. Now, this tank is fine. We've added some black sand in amongst there, giving it another water change today. And, um, and it's looking nice and clear again after a couple of hours obviously every time you you do the water changes you're replacing that bit of water we've got some probably a bit of cloudiness coming from the dragonstone different things you know the substrate as well releasing it the volcanic rock below that as well which is releasing a bit you know that little bit of sediment and um, but it's clearing up lovely now haven't made the lid as yet partly way through it still waiting for some more stuff to come mr man there mr jack is doing really well he's had his his brine shrimp this morning which he tucked into straight away and thoroughly enjoyed himself I think on that little on that little batch we threw in there this morning had a few hiding around in the substrate but he soon picked those out but I think today what we're gonna do is we are gonna pick on the bench tank I think yes we're gonna pick on the bench tank today we've got the moss has gone absolutely ballistic I don't know if you remember but when I put the um, when we originally put all these little trees in they were no bigger they were no bigger than my fist it was probably smaller than my fist actually now and now that one here is about probably nearly enough the size of my head it's got that big it's unreal it's squashing from the front to the back because it's only six inches wide this tank as you know or if you didn't know it's only six inches wide six feet long and um, the plants have gone absolutely mad and it's looking a little bit overgrown at the moment we having some flow issues in there for obvious reasons because it's taken up so much space that um, the flow is not adequately going around the system and um, so we're getting those little pockets of detritus those little pockets of build up and we're getting a little bit of hair algae growing on the moss which is no worry at all you can see all the hair the hair algae up in this corner here and there's little bits of string as well on some of the other little trees but we can cut all that off today I've lost a couple of the hatchet fish. I think one of them's done a, there's only a little tiny gap at the top there, but I think one of them's managed to jump through there. They do, they do jump as we know. Unless it's gone in amongst the moss somewhere and hope, well, you may have died in amongst the moss, but we're gonna trim everything back. We're gonna give it a good water change today and make it all look nice and tidy. But now that's off, you can see the pipe work. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen this, I actually built this tank um, a while ago. And um, now there's a three part build. But we've got all the filtration here, which we made up. Big sponge filters inside. We've got the media tube up here, which is full of uh, bio home media all the way through there to get that anaerobic bacteria growing in there. And it's keeping this tank really, really nicely going. Okay guys, that's a little bit better now. I've managed to get you on a bit better of an angle and um, I've just swapped around and got a little strip light now behind the behind the back there now, just resting along the spreaders at the top there. So we can, uh, so I can give you a little bit more light and trim up and show you what we're doing. Right, let's get some, uh, let's get some work done. Okay guys, that's a little bit better now. The hyperlapse footage completely went wrong I pressed the wrong button and um, these things happen but we put a lot of shape back into these little trees now I've removed all the that dwarf sage there that was going along the bottom along the front there and we trimmed everything back nice and level a little bit murky still but we'll pop back in a while and um, I'll show you guys what uh, what's lurking in amongst all the plants that were there now because there's so many more shrimp now you can see Lots of little baby ones as well. I put all the moss from the uh, from in here into the shrimp room. I put it into one of my other tanks, my little odds and bods tank. So anything that was in there now is going to be in that tank, and um, I can slowly then utilise the mosses and the little plants and things that I've taken out. I'm going to put some more of that dwarf grass. There's a lot of dwarf hair grass in there in this tank along the bottom there. Doesn't it's not doing as well as I thought it would do, to be honest. Um, but that's one of those things just could be down to the lighting the moss loves this light 
but that might not. I've got it down low, hair grass like strong light, high CO2, so to get it going really nicely. But um happy with it so far, everything's everything's like you say been trimmed back now, looking good, and we've got lots of little off cuts and cuttings now that we can put into the uh, into the better tank now and put a little bit on the uh, in the substrate in the foreground I think so I think we'll go and grab some of that and I'll plant that up as well right we've got a few little selections of plants here that I've taken out from from the other shrimp room now a little piece of uh, choya wood there we've got some little baby's tears some bits of rickia some dwarf hair grass baby's tears different things that we've taken out of the big tank that we can transplant now I've just put a bit of rick here up here just up by the waterfall there just so it's going to suck that water up and I'll just see how that does go in a bit in the water and a bit out of the water at the same time got some nice little clumps of baby's tears and um, I just said that didn't I I'm just trying to get some of this Java moss off of here and then we'll put some of this in amongst the back baby's tears loves to float so sometimes it's helpful to have a couple of tools as you're rattling things down just hold it and then just cover it With a bit of sand like that got some little floaties as well you see the other ones in there took those out of the shrimp room as well some little dwarf um, water lettuce which are going to be great because better love those sort of plants hair grass as well and push some of that in amongst the that media there I think I'll take a bit of that Rick here. I think I'll part part that in half. And we'll just stick a bit of that in there as well. Just to see how that gets on. Nice bit of life in the foreground as well. I like this carpet in. When it starts to carpet well, dwarf hair grass, it's absolutely beautiful. And that should start creeping around nicely. Given time. Little plug of baby's tears there as well. Nice ground cover plant. Some people, some people chop it down. This is quite short anyway because it's been, it's been cut a couple of times. I've just put a thin layer of of the um, of this sand on here for the time being. I'm going to get it planted up, and I've got a little bit left. And then what I'll do is I'll give it a nice sprinkling over, and that'll cover everything up afterwards. Then, because the uh, this volcanic rock does tend to uh, pop out every now and again. So I'm going to stick a few root tabs in amongst it as well. Yeah, it's turned out nice this little aquarium. I quite like this one.
That one's being a bit stubborn there, look at that. That'll do. As long as you get those roots underneath, that'll start growing away lovely. It's got some nice little bits of sub tang on that choya wood which will start to grow out nice. There you are, I think that's, uh, we've got a few little bits in amongst it now. Doesn't look much from where you are, I'll just give you a little zoom in on it. That's crystal clear now, that water is lovely. Jack settled in well next door. Been chasing his uh, little brine shrimps around for most of the morning where are you let me show you him there he is chasing them brine shrimp around he absolutely loves them Right, we'll stick a couple of more of these in. All plants that you put in, guys, they take a they take a fair time to to get going. But it's like the old gardeners you always used to say to me: you spend all your time planting it, and the rest of your life hacking it back. And that's very true, that is, because once it gets say. Uh, a good foothold it'll be away in no time at all but it does take time to get that foothold so you've got to be patient when you see these lovely these lovely tanks they've either spent a fortune on them on the plants and bought lots and lots of plants that are already in pots and they spend hundreds of pounds on plants and they get a pretty pretty you know instant impact of carpeting but I like to do it sporadically like this and let things just grow in naturally and let it spread naturally. It's just a lot more uh, satisfying than me than just throwing a heap of huge plants in a tank and getting that instant impact because then you've got nothing to watch grow out and and mature over time then. And that's it. And one little bit of baby's tea is there. I'll just pop in there. And I think that will do it. Yes, that'll do, I think, for the time being. A couple of nice little tanks there, all DIY builds. Looking nice. I've got to wash out a little bit of sand and I'll sprinkle a bit more sand on the top of here. I just picked up a cheap bag of this sand. Aqua substrate. Only about four pounds for that little bag, so it's not too bad. There you go, that's all planted up now. So it's about as much as I want to put in there. You can see the little bits of baby's tears, the hair grass, all the other plants that we just put in there. And they'll slowly start creeping through that substrate. And in time, we should end up with a nice carpet, which will be nice. Plants are doing nicely, everything's still healthy and green, nothing's dying back. This is all the wild moss. That's from the waterfall up in the Brecon Beacons. That's that stuff there and that stuff there. As And this carpet in spag, I think that's sphagnum moss, that one. That's also doing well, and a bit of fairy moss there. That was all from the Breckens. 
as was that little chunk there so as you can see they're sucking up the water nicely from that little waterfall that I created there which is trickling away beautifully now I did I've been toying on the idea of putting something different in here because I was thinking about the lid on there but it's sort of I, I really like that the openness of this and we know that better like leaping around the place and the last thing that you want is to leave them uncovered and they see a little insect or something or just decide to go for a, a fly around in the air and end up on the floor because I'd hate that to happen to any any little fish so I'm still toying on the idea of putting something different in here I'm not sure what yet I might still do it I don't know stick some comments down there see what you what do you guys think would be another a nice species to put in there I thought of some nice guppies there's some beautiful guppies at the moment on the market down in my local fish shop some absolutely stunning ones some uh, mosaics yeah so let so let me know what you think what could be an alternative to go in here I mean yes you could put I could put a better in there I could put a female in there but I like that open look I thought of a nice shoulder, maybe a nice shoulder, like, I don't know, 10 cardinals or something in there. Which would look stunning with that darker substrate that would really make them pop. A couple of little corries in there whizzing about. Cleaning up that substrate, hoovering around in it as and when it matures up. It's just a matter of time now before this cycles through. It's got cycled media in the back. And I've sprinkled in a bit of fish food in amongst it just to keep it going. So that can rot down and have something to feed those little colonies in there. How are you doing, little Jack? Beautiful fish, he really is. Right, we can go up now, we can have a look in this tank. Now, I shaped it all up in there. The speedy footage went completely wrong. The camera failed for some reason. And it was just, it was. I think it was. It went in reverse. It was going slower than faster. So it was obviously something that I'd done and, and messed around. But there is lots and lots of shrimp in here now. You can see them there all over the place. Still got a little bit of, um, obviously, cloudiness to the water. But we've trimmed everything back. Lovely big female there. I'm not sure if she's carrying. It doesn't look like it. But it won't be long, she might shed now after this water change. Cut down all this nice and low so that will thicken up again. Lots of yellow sakuras all around the place full of berries. Another one down there. We've got a lovely saddled female there, as you can see if she turns around. A little crystal black just behind her. You can see the eggs there in the back. There you go, you can near enough see she it's always the way when you want to watch something. There you go, you can see that saddle now quite clearly. Through the top there. We've got another one up the top here, hiding in the bushes, up in the old subwazatang tree. Bit of a darker one that one, but she's carrying loads of uh, berries as well. On the filter, we got another one there. She's full up. There's no end of them in here. And another one down there as well. It's good to see. And some more at the back there. There is, there's no end of buried up females in here. It's going to be a, a big explosion in here in a couple of weeks time. It's going to be exciting stuff. Get the old Gen Chem Polites going and the old bacteria and stuff. Making sure there's lots of uh, biofilm and everything growing in the tank for them when they, when they hatch out. Little crystal black there on the top of a rock. Feeding away. Always like to see the baby ones. Means the system's healthy. 
What are you guys on about the CO2 levels? What I run in this tank now it's only six inches wide, six feet long, the bench tank, and I run my CO2 system at about one bubble a second. Well, maybe it's just under a bubble a second actually, because it's not a huge tank volume-wise, and that just keeps that little. I've just changed the fluid in the drop checker there, as you can see, it's blue again. I've just refilled that, put 15 new drops of that in there and inverted that. If you don't know how they work, the gas is coming up underneath underneath there. You can see the, the air bubble, the CO2 purge, it goes into that then and affects the uh, that liquid inside, which then turns to yellow and green. You want green, you don't want yellow. Yellow means you've got too much going on in there and you want to back it off a bit. If you ever do overdose on CO2, guys, give it a water change and that'll remove some of the CO2 from there as well and then turn it down. I thought that snail was inside that then, but it's not. <laughs> Don't go in there, mate. Nice coloured up little crystal red there in the background. There you go, there's a tiny, tiny little yellow Sakura there. Little tiny baby one. If there's one, there'll be a lot more. Most of them are hiding in the moss because of the endlers. They like to uh, keep out the way of them because they will pick the young ones off if they see them. So a lot of them are hiding in the mosses. Well, the good thing is about all these yellow sakuras that are uh, that are all buried up is that if you're in the UK, when it warms up a bit more, there's going to be a there's going to be a lot in here, and I'll start selling a few of these off. So if you're in the UK and you're interested in some of these yellow sakuras, I'll post some out to you. Stick a few on eBay, put a few more pound back into the old hobby, so I can make some more things, keep me busy. It all goes back into the hobby. got a few under there and I think she has as well by the looks of things yep full up as well look at that two mums to be you never know come the summertime one of those little babies underneath there might be in your tank <laughs> look at the difference in the color as well on the eggs lovely to see Well, I must say, guys, I'm really enjoying myself in this channel at the moment. I should have done this years and years ago. I've kept a multitude of different species over the years, from alligator gars, breeding black diamond stingrays, lots and lots of different things. I just wish I'd have done it years back, and um, I could have filmed it all for you. And you'd have had, um, you could have seen some all, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. I've had some uh, Goliath tiger fish in a big system that I was running years back. That was fantastic. Gave my alligator guard to Bristol Zoo in the end because he outgrew my tank. He was absolute monster, he was. Yeah, really enjoying the channel. Great. All you guys have been fantastic. I couldn't ask for nicer subscribers. Brilliant comments coming through. And um, it's, a real, it's a real joy to uh, wake up in the morning and see some of the comments and read some of the things that you've sent me. It really is. And I'm always out here to help you guys out. You know that, anything that you need to know or if I can help you out, I will. Different channels have got in touch with me asking me to uh, have a look at their videos and I've which I've done and some of you have done some good stuff and I have subscribed to your channels as well because I'm all for uh, helping people out that's what this channel is all about is helping people out helping you young guys out that are starting up 
giving you any advice that I can. Yeah, the koi are starting to wake up again. A little bit more active today. Yeah, the old moss is growing well, look at that. Ah, just seen a nice female at the back there. She's all chock-a-block there with berries. That's lovely, look at that. Just noticed her there. Very still. Probably a bit stressed still after all the water change and me fiddling around in there. Right, now I made a couple of these last night. People were asking about when I'm going to put them on eBay. And it's going to be soon. Now what I've done is I've carved these out, lasered all these out, but I've got to put the pins in through yet. And um, I've got to put the pins in and the little discs at the top. Now I've got the pig, I've got the acrylic rods coming for that, but it's not going to be in probably Tuesday, Wednesday next week, I would have thought. So um, we can get them on the go and get them on eBay. Chuck a couple of pound back in the old bank account to buy some more acrylic. If any of you guys want them. Anyway, what I have done, I was very busy last night. And I was going to show you these on Wednesday, but I'll show you them now, I think. I made this slot here. Look at that lot. I made them last night. I was out here till about one o'clock in the morning. Lasered on little plecos on each one. And um, I made about 25 there. So they're all going to be up for grabs when I get the rest of the equipment in. And we can make those in. As you can see, lasered little plecos. I think they look quite funky on there actually. And we got 25 of these. So they'll they'll all be up next week, guys. Starting that jellyfish tank rather soon. I'm just waiting for some other little bits and bobs to turn up before we can start that one. And um, and I'm looking forward to doing that one. Anyway, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. If you're new to the channel don't forget to uh, subscribe and the notification bell for up and coming videos that way you're not going to miss anything in the future anyway guys as always love you loads you're all stars thanks for tuning in and i'll see you on the next edition of marcus aquatics take care bye for now Just me and my